In this video, you'll see the built-in data validation mechanisms enabled in the grid control by default. You'll then learn how to specify your own data cell validation rules and how to control the UI that informs end users about the errors. Finally, you'll see how to enable row validation, which allows you to take into account values from multiple columns. The grid control has built-in data type validation enabled by default. To see how it works, run the application and try to enter a string value into a column bound to a numeric data field. When you press enter, or try to move focus away from the cell, the grid control validates data input. It raises an error as the string cannot be converted to a numeric value. You can see the same error message if you hover over the error icon. Note that you have to correct your entered value or discard changes to continue working with the grid control. To cancel your changes, press escape. The grid control also allows you to manually control data validation via specially designed events. First, let's see how you can change the default error message. Write a handler for the validating editor event. Check that the focused column's field name equals unit price, and then try converting the event's value parameter to double type. If the value cannot be converted, set the valid parameter to false, and specify your customer error text property value. Now run the application. Enter a string into the unit price cell. See how the validation mechanism now shows your custom defined error message. Now modify the same event handler to allow only positive values in the unit price column. Check that the converted devil value is greater than or zero. If not, set the valid parameter to false and specify your custom error message. Now run the application. If you enter zero into a cell, the specified error message is invoked. You can also customize how errors are displayed by handling the invalid value exception event. In the event handler, first show the message box with the error text property value. Then suppress the default error icon and tooltip by setting the exception mode parameter to no action. Now run the application and enter an incorrect value into a unit price cell. The grid control now informs you about the error via the message box. If a value's validity depends on other values within the same row, you can enable row validation. For example, let's make sure that units in stock values are greater than units on order values. To do this, handle the validate row event. In this event handler, first obtain the required column objects. Then use the views get row cell value method to determine the focused rows values in the units in stock and units on order columns. Then check if one is greater than the other, and if needed, set error messages to column cells using the set column error method. Use a column object as the first parameter and error message string as the second parameter. You can also assign an error to the entire row by using the set column error method with the first parameter set to null. Then set the event's valid parameter to false and error text to your custom error message. Now run the application to see how this works. Enter the invalid value and try to switch focus to another row. This is when row validation happens. The default error dialog with the specified error text is invoked. Click yes and then hover over error icons to see error messages specified for the entire row as well as individual columns. You can now customize how errors are displayed when validating rows by handling the invalid row exception event. To disable the default dialog window, set the exception mode parameter to no action. Now run the application again. Enter an incorrect value and try to move row focus to invoke row validation. The message is suppressed, but you can still see the same error icons and data cells and the row indicator area.